Hello everyone, and welcome to Mind Vomit by Gabe. I am, of course, Gabe. Today, I want to show you how in Adobe Illustrator to use what I call the invisible brush. I recently just found out this brush from Michael Austin on Skillshare.com. I just wanted to share it with you because this was a game changer. So let's just get right into it right away. So what you want to do is grab your ellipse tool over here create a small little ellipse like this. Select it and then make sure that there is no stroke. Oh, there's a random one sitting here. Why is that one there? Anyway, select this one, make sure that there's no stroke and no fill. Now here's the important part. So it's sitting right here. You cannot select this. Let me go over to my brushes palette though and get this little open area. You cannot select this with the direct selection tool. You have, well, I said that wrong. You cannot select this with a selection tool and drag it into brushes. It won't work. You have to use the direct selection tool or A, shortcut, highlight it, and then drag it over here into your brushes palette. So then your, your new brush, you know, screen here will pop up. Click art brush, click OK. Now I use a Wacom Bamboo, which is an older model. I'll put a link in the description to a newer model Wacom that you guys can use. Also, I might uh, put a link in the description to Michael Austin's video on Skillshare so you can check his stuff out. But anyway, switch the width here from fixed to pressure if you're using a Wacom tablet. Make sure your key color is black and hit OK. So let me grab my Wacom tablet sitting over here. So what this does, so if you do like a lot of artwork like I do where you do like digital inking or you do comic books or whatever, this may help you out a lot. And I know it did me. It was very different. So grab your paintbrush tool here. Grab your invisible brush. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Make sure that your fill is set to black. Grab your invisible brush. Now what this does is whatever shape you draw, it's going to fill it with black. So if I do this little zigzag shape and I close it off, it's black. Now I want to show you something here about this tool. Um, you can see that this was my end point. This was my start point. That end point didn't end up where the start was. And so I got this little off, off cut here a little bit. Also, when you work with this brush, you click on double click on your paintbrush tool. And that'll bring up fidelity. I just set it all the way up to smooth because I want this to be smooth. I don't want it to be jaggy or anything like that. So why this is kind of a game changer for me is I have always used, I'm pretty much self-taught with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. I've learned them with lynda.com. I take lessons on skillshare.com right now, relearning things. And I've done, looked at videos on YouTube, but everything I've done here, I've pretty much learned myself. So in this drawing, for instance, I outlined all this stuff. I inked it all with the blob brush. And the reason why I use the blob brush is because I also have a vinyl cutter, a Roland GX24 that I've used to make stencils and things for when I do airbrush work and stuff. And blob brushes, when you do the strokes and the strokes touch each other, they become one. So basically the whole outline of this character is all one piece. So that's the way I've always done it but it's a little hard to do like with the blob brush it's a little hard to make consistent strokes like this or these hash lines and make them consistent looking because you have to almost make sure your pressure is the same every single time so what this brush does for me is it makes it a heck of a lot easier to do like these hash mark shading things so if I go in here and do these little hash marks like this and then come down, close it off. That looks a heck of a lot better than had I done it with the blob brush. Even, so let's say I just wanna make a little curvy, you know, like show that this is, this is like a folded in the fabric or a curve in the fabric. If I just wanna come down here and make this little curve shape, boom, it's done, it's that easy. If, let's say, on this skull over here, on this guy, or if I can get to him, on this guy over here, 
you know, if I just wanted to add like a little black shading back here, I could just draw it in freehand. There, done. It's over with. Whereas before a blob brush, I'd have to draw this, fill it all in. You know, it was kind of time consuming. I still absolutely love blob brush, but I think this is going to save me a lot of time. And I, I would have never learned this had I not run across Michael Austin's video on Skillshare. And it was, and I don't know, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of professional graphic designers out there who know Illustrator very well and they know Photoshop very well, and they probably already know this trick, but I didn't. And I know that there's people out there like me who are learning Illustrator and Photoshop and don't know this trick and would love to know this because it's such a time saver. And so I thought I would bring this video to show you real quick. And uh, yeah, I mean, and if you're curious about this drawing that you're seeing here, um, I served in the Marine Corps, so I can legitimately use this emblem, but uh, I served in the Marine Corps, and um, this was a shirt that I designed for our um, Marine Corps reunion. We were stationed on an aircraft carrier, and we had a reunion, so this was a t-shirt design. Um, these fonts have changed a little bit, but you can see that I've added some some fonts and stuff in, in here. But um, um, yeah, I, I did a uh, painting on the aircraft carrier of a guy like this, and you know, like, 15 years later, whatever, this is an updated version. So I did that for them. And this was drawn in uh, Adobe Illustrator or inked in Adobe Illustrator and all this textured painting and stuff that you see here was all done in Photoshop. Um, and it's actually the very first time I've actually ever painted anything in Photoshop. So it was kind of a learning experience. I just wanted to share this with you, make a quick video. Uh, I have some more videos coming up here soon. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing to my channel. It helps out a lot. I'm trying to grow this channel from nothing. So support my channel. Keep watching. Uh, I'm going to put affiliate links in the description and uh, use them. I mean, uh, even if even if the link doesn't pertain to you, like if you're not going to buy a Wacom bamboo tablet, just click on the link, go to Amazon, buy whatever you want. If it's Frank's Red Hot, because I buy gallons of Frank's Red Hot at the... Uh, at Amazon to eat with my breakfast burritos and you do the same then go buy Frank's Red Hot but use my link because every little bit will help me out and every little bit will make this channel that much better and I just want to keep bringing awesome creative content and how-to videos to you guys so keep supporting me keep watching keep liking commenting subscribing and I'll just keep turning stuff out so thanks a lot thanks for watching see you guys again soon